Pardon in advance to all the medical terminologies. I am no medical professional, but I just wanted to share based on my personal experience, all the tests that were done on me when my spouse brought me to the hospital in Bellevue, Washington in April of 2022. The first thing they did in the ER was to perform a chest x-ray. I have been complaining about the heartburn and the shortness of breath. I was expecting that they will find something wrong in the lungs or in my GI, but the x-ray showed that my heart was distended. Surprise! Then the ER doctor started escalating my situation to the cardiologist. Then after a few minutes, they sent a point-of-care portable ultrasound, which also confirmed my enlarged heart. The ultrasound is called echocardiogram, which provides more measures of the ejection fraction and the atrial dilation. Then after a couple of hours, the blood test results came out and showed that my BNP was abnormally elevated. BNP is B-type natriuretic peptide. It is used as a marker for heart failure. So the higher the level, the more serious the condition is. And the standard value is between 100 and 400. And mine was more than 2,000. It's a terrifying number. There have been a few EKGs or electrocardiograms done while I was in the ER. And most of the results show sinus tachycardia with multiple PVCs or premature ventricular contraction. PVCs are the extra heartbeats that occur in the heart's lower chambers. When you feel like your heart is fluttering inside your chest, that's the feeling of having a PVC. It happens generally to everyone, but prolonged and intense occurrence of it indicates a problem. Then they started giving me diuretics to flush out all the excess water in my body. And my breathing has improved day after day because of the diuresis. And then on the next day, they sent me down again in the test labs to do an angiogram. The coronary angiogram checks for narrowed or blocked arteries in the heart, indicating coronary artery disease, which is one of the most common causes of heart failure. I think this is the first big test I have undergone in relation to heart. And I was scared and I didn't know what to expect. I was glad that there was a nurse right beside me explaining and comforting me the whole time during the test. With very light sedation, I could see and hear what was happening in the room. So they inserted an IV into my arm artery, it's right here. And a contrast dye flowed through this IV the coloring helps blood vessels show up better in the x-ray images. Then there's a giant monitor on my right side showing my whole body with all the blood vessels exposed. So as soon as the dye enters the blood vessel, you will see it run through my entire body. It's fascinating to watch the screen. But more importantly, it is comforting to hear, it's a big relief to hear that from my cardiologist performing the test that my blood vessels are clean. Thank God there are no blockages. Because if they find some, the cardiologist can open the clogged arteries during the test. It's called angioplasty. I was so worried about this test as I knew I indulge in many greasy and fatty foods like steak, pork, belly, and lamb. And this is the reason why I take Metamucil. Fiverr really does wonders on the body. I can prove that now. Then the following day, they sent me down again to do an MRI, which is magnetic resonance imaging. It is a non-invasive test that uses magnets and radio waves to create detailed images of the heart and blood vessels. So they put you inside a massive cylindrical scanner, lying very still on a table, that slides into the machine. You hear the doctor instructing you to hold your breath every time they capture the images. It took almost 40 minutes. It's a long test. And I had to bear the discomfort of loud humming and buzzing noise while being trapped in an enclosed machine. 
So the result showed and confirmed my dilated cardiomyopathy. I'm not surprised anymore. And then the rest of the time of that seven day hospitalization, I was attached to different heart monitors. And then once or twice a day, there will be some beeps indicating sustained PVCs. That is no good because nurses and doctors rushed to my room to make sure I was not having a cardiac arrest. But I was thankful that my body was stabilized after seven days, which allowed me to fly back to Chicago. I am just grateful that all of these tests are all available in the same hospital, in the same building, just different floors, and there was no way to complete them. Then my cardiologist agreed to discharge me after seven days. Given that, I would be wearing a life vest, which is a wearable defibrillator. It will constantly check for irregular heartbeats and instantly try to correct them. So if there is a sudden loss of my heart activity, which means a cardiac arrest, the life vest will activate and start defibrillating my heart. So after 30 pounds of water loss, 36 blood tests, and five cardiac tests, my body is stable enough to make the trip back home and continue my heart failure treatment in Chicago.